The economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic in St. Vincent and the Grenadines deepened this week with 156 construction workers from Mustique being sent back here to mainland St. Vincent amid an outbreak of cases on that Grenadine island, renowned as the playground of the world's rich and famous. The workers arrived in Kingstown on Tuesday aboard this ferry. None of them were willing to speak to Eyewitness News about the impact that the suspension of construction in Mustique is likely to have on their finances. However, Eyewitness News was reliably informed that the Musty company, which manages the island, decided to suspend all construction work after 18 workers tested positive last week. Eyewitness News understands that after the suspension of construction, the workers were told to take all their belongings with them as the company was unsure of when construction would resume. The development comes amidst a surge in cases which has resulted in the number of active cases in St. Vincent and the Grenadines rising to 860 as of Friday, September 24, up from 27 active cases just one month earlier. Five people have died of COVID-19 since September 9, taking the total to 17, up from 12 in May when the previous last death had been recorded. Additionally, 20 COVID-19 patients are hospitalized at the Argyle Isolation Facility, while a further 11 are warded at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital. Health officials say that of the 31 patients, one is fully vaccinated, one is partially vaccinated, and the status of a third patient is unknown. At a press conference on Thursday, health officials detailed the number of cases per health district but did not comment on the communities that have significant clusters. However, Member of Parliament for the Southern Grenadines, Terence Oliver, an opposition lawmaker, this week expressed concerns about the number of cases in Kanawan and Union Island located in his constituency. Oliver said that the situation was at crisis level. This situation, I, I think it is at crisis proportion. When you look at a small island where you have people who live in close proximity to one another and you hear of these numbers, you've heard about what happened on the island of Canon where it seems like so many people were on quarantine that even um, places like the bank and other business places were, were, were at, a, at, a, at a strain to operate. People need to take this thing seriously and recognize that the linemen on the block and going here and talking about who have it or who have, doesn't have it and you linemen on the block with it, jam up and, 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 and drinking and all the same well, like if nothing is, is happening, that that too is contributing, may contribute to the spread of the virus. Sources in the know tell Eyewitness News that 73 cases have been diagnosed in Kanawan, which has a population of about 2,500 people, while in Union Island, where there are 3,000 residents, the number was 12. The government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, as with the rest of the region, continues to struggle with low vaccination levels. Three vaccines, AstraZeneca, Sputnik V, and Pfizer, are available in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, all free of charge. As of Friday, September 24th, 20,165 first doses have been administered and 13,251 people have taken a second jab in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The vaccination effort may not be helped by the revelation that 31 fully vaccinated people locally have tested positive for the novel coronavirus. Medical Officer of Health Dr. Roger Duncan summarized at this week's press conference the benefits of vaccination. The vaccines are going to protect you from becoming severely ill, protect you from hospitalization, and protect you from death. And I mean, I don't think that there's any there's any better message um, in, 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 in this case for, for us to send. I, even with the, the small number of breakthrough infections we, we, we've had, and I mean, I said it was 2.7% or 19 of the currently active cases. 
um, only one of those persons were hospitalized. And, you know, so of the, the bulk of the hospitalization, over 99% of the hospitalization is among unvaccinated people, persons, sorry, and all the deaths are among unvaccinated persons. Two weeks before students are expected to return to the physical classroom for the first time since December 2020, the health ministry has revealed that one out of every five cases in the week ended September 21 was a person under age 18. Dr. Duncan said that health officials are discussing their advice to the government on the reopening of school. Amidst the misinformation and disinformation that the government has been struggling to contain, one of its advisors, Dr. Gerald Thompson, an infectious disease specialist and former science and technology minister, said that the anti-vaccination protest in Kingstown on September 9 was a super spreader event. I think we've learned several things over the last couple of weeks. We've learned that the protest rally was a super spreader event. It was a super spreader event. However, Dr. Duncan told the media on Thursday that the Ministry of Health has not identified any super spreader event in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I don't think we could say we have. Um, we could have, we, we probably could point to some socioeconomic conditions and some living conditions that have um, supported or, you know, or, or allowed for greater spread of disease. But I, I don't think we could point to one or two events to say that these events were super spreaders. Kendall. Earlier this week, Minister of Finance Camilla Gonzalez warned the Vincentians that as the pandemic wears on, inflation will rise, resulting in higher cost of commodities and shipping. Some consumers say that the minister spoke in the wrong tense, adding that these increases have already been seen for months. These vendors in Kingstown say they are already feeling the squeeze. This month in September with the COVID, it's real terrible. You hardly see anybody come around to buy something. Sometimes you hear here for the whole day. You might sell a $25 or yes, $30. Sometimes you make a fifty dollars, but it's real terrible right now. The sale is very dead because of the coveting. Everywhere closed down. Only people who eating in the home and you know getting the cutting to cook, and we can't do it out there because some people don't have it to buy by the week. It's only everyday little thing, little thing, little thing. And no, we ain't had no help. How long have you been a vendor? Mm, about 10 years. And have you ever seen it like this before? Never, never, never. Never seen this before. Literally, there's no sales in Kingston. I mean, before the, before the volcano, there was a little chink it. But since that, there's literally nothing at all after that. I mean, nothing, literally. I sell DVDs, clothes, food, whatever food in terms of drunk provision, whatever's there to be sold. Sometimes even barrel stuff. And there's no sale. Today, today or Friday. And you see me standing here just wondering what's happening for today. And today being a Friday. Long day till I come down to the Friday, you're gonna get something. Friday and Saturday. But now you don't know if there's Friday, Saturday, or even end the month. You just have to be here basically every day, hoping that something will happen. Hardly anybody coming through, and who coming through just passed in. And what You're impact not is, spending. What impact is this having on your livelihood, like your ability to pay your bills or feed well, yourself? Well, it have a big impact because you have bills to pay, and you can't make it to pay your bills it's real tough that way real hard trust me that one i'm asking how long this will be and as the second year of the pandemic drags on that undoubtedly is a question on the minds of many vincentians how long will this last kenton chance eyewitness news kingstown st vincent Local juice, yeah.